morning, guys. It is day three on the Via Podiensis. Last night, I gotta tell you, I did not get a good night's sleep. I had the strangest dream of my entire life. It was also very cold, so maybe it was my subconscious trying to get me to uh, wake up. Today, we have a 19 kilometer day to like a little town. It's not even a town, it's like a monastery in the middle of the forest. We gotta climb about 300. Uh, meters of elevation over 19 kilometers. That's nothing, it's pretty much flat. And I had breakfast this morning at 7.30 with a group of uh, French that spoke Spanish. So it's getting better. <laughs> At least I get to talk to other people. I had, uh, what was it, like a croissant, bread, orange juice, and that coffee that they serve you in a bowl that is just uh, hilarious. What else, what else? By the time I made it back to the albergue to pick up my backpack, my luggage was already gone, so the luggage transferring service is working like a charm. Great day ahead today. We're walking in uh, farm fields, forests, through villages that time seemed to have uh, stopped. Can't wait to see it all right after that intro, of course. So far, the language barrier has been the toughest part of the trip, but I'm kind of used to it in a way when I was here in France in 2018. But I'm getting flashbacks of when I arrived into the United States in 93, when everything was new, new culture, couldn't understand what people were saying. It was all body language to communicate. And uh, yeah, overcast day cold morning, I say like in the low 50s. Last night it dropped into like 40 degrees. I had the window open. <laughs> At the beginning I had my quilt and it was too hot and I guess it fell down. And in the middle of the night, the, the weird dream that I had, I don't want to talk about it because it's kind of personal, but let's just say that it started with a snake on the Appalachian Trail and then the snake crawled in through the open door and from then on it got so surreal that even in the dream I was saying this cannot be real but at the same time I didn't know that I was uh, dreaming I guess that's kind of like the subconscious trying to get you to wake up it was just throwing everything at me and when I did wake up I was just freezing so yeah not a great night's sleep but I'm sure tonight is gonna be a totally different story Seeing uh, pilgrims uh, leaving town already, we all kind of leave at the same time because we have breakfast at the same time, around 7.30, and then we kind of spread out. Wow, I'm climbing, <laughs> hence why I'm a little bit out of breath. You can see the town right there behind me. We're on a, on a road, like one of those secondary backcountry road, but then up ahead, I'm sure we're gonna leave it behind. Before I left uh, town this morning, I stopped by a bakery 
And what do you think I got? Of course, some uh, chocolate croissant or pan de chocolate. And I also have uh, the apple that I bought yesterday. That's what I have as a snack because today we got a few amenities, a few bars and such, but that's all past the halfway point. So the first half, there's nothing, just villages like the one that you just saw, like farming towns. And then we start to see a little bit more of civilization, maybe a place to stop and have a cafe. And then today, at, to, at the end of today's stage where I'm staying, kind of like a monastery, that's the only thing in the area. So of course I'm gonna be paying for the meals there, for uh, dinner and for breakfast uh, tomorrow. I was uh, looking yesterday for a place for a laundry mud, but there's nothing until the end of tomorrow's stage, which is good because I brought enough uh, clothes for four days of hiking, plus my city clothes. So today's day three, so I have one set of clean clothes and I don't have to do uh, laundry. Maybe I'll start just washing like my socks, underwear, in case of an emergency, I can always wear the same uh, pants and the same uh, shirt. <sighs> still cloudy, still cold, still pilgrims passing me by. Just taking my time. in the forest you know I mentioned that I wasn't gonna talk about the dream but I think throughout the day I'm gonna share with you a few of the key moments that are not too personal but I think it has a lot to do with what's going on here in in, uh, in France the lack of communication and at the end there was a lesson that I got loud and clear maybe I'll share it with you guys later on in the day Le Falzet. A quick stop in this uh, charming little town that had a place to uh, stop and resupply. Did not get anything, but I did get to film a lot, including the inside of the barn, which had a peculiar artwork there. Just gonna leave it like that. And then as I was making my way out of the town, 
I got some water at a rest stop. And I also saw for the second time on today's stage, uh, a bathroom. They have toilets here in, uh, in this Camino, which is just amazing. You can stop, do your business. They even have water inside, so it's great. I think in, if you're in a pinch, you can even use it as a stealth spot if you need to camp, but I wouldn't recommend it. Halfway point of the day, cloudy, it's starting to break up. Every now and then you get a, a little bit of sun. The temperature is rising. Let's see, 60 degrees right now. And uh, the climb is being gradual. Easy day, easy day so far. Going in and out of the forest. I think in the next town is where they have cafes, uh, they even have a supermarket where I may actually stop and get a few things. The legend of the chupacabra, or a werewolf, or just a regular wolf, I don't know. There's a story right here, I need to translate it when I get back home. But this is the second wolf that I see today. I saw one early in the morning, and I guess this area, still volcanic area, with all the fissures, the rocks. Great day, walking, the sun just came out. Look what they have here for pilgrims. Coffee, right across from this albergue. I'm gonna go in and see if, uh, if they have a bite to eat. It's already uh, noon, and I would very much like to have some lunch. I'm running low on supplies. There's a supermarket in the area that I have to hit. Especially today, since I'm getting to a place that's not a town, there's nothing there. So I gotta prepare for tomorrow, maybe also for this afternoon. I never get worried because things always work out. I made it to that town. I saw pilgrims by the main uh, area there, like a rest area, having uh, lunch. I decided to continue on. I saw this little uh, donativo area where you can get some uh, coffee. Continue on, and at the end of the town, there was a Git restaurant. They're actually renovating it. They bought the house last year, and they're even building a swimming pool inside. The two guys that are running it, speak both English and Spanish. So I was there talking to them and they made me this uh, spread of uh, cold cuts and cheese, goat cheese, cow cheese, all kinds of uh, uh, meats and even a salad. The lettuce and the tomatoes are from the garden that they have there uh, next door. Just incredible red wine and sparkling water and all of that for like 14 euros. I only ate half, the other half I'm taking it with me. And that's gonna be lunch for tomorrow because that supermarket that I thought I was gonna be able to go and resupply, they told me it's in the town away from the Camino. And there's another supermarket on tomorrow's uh, stage. So I'm gonna take all the leftovers, including the bread, and that's gonna be lunch for tomorrow. It is 2.20 right now, under five kilometers to go. 
blue skies, the sun just came out. I mean, perfect. It kind of feels like I have the whole Camino all to myself. Every now and then I get to see a few pilgrims, but for the most part, I'm on my own and I love it. Wow, what a boost of energy, right? Incredible. So finally got here at 3.40 in the afternoon after walking for five hours, uh, 20, 21 kilometers. The woman at the reception spoke a little bit of English. So everything is just great. I got my sheets here. I paid for the dinner and breakfast uh, tomorrow morning. And now I'm going around this place looking for my room where my bag should be there waiting for me already. What a cool place. This is not a monastery. This is like, uh, it is a historic place. I saw the plaque at the entrance. I'm gonna go check it out later on before I tell you guys something that is not correct. And then you guys massacre me in the comment section down below. So here's the git. Let's fall back into the routine. So here I am in my dorm room. So far, there's only three of us. There's room for uh, like six. I uh, got here, gear explosion all over the place. I put up my the, the sheets that I got from, uh, from the owners and then I took a shower, which is uh, back there and uh, went to get my uh, luggage, which was in the git next door. This is kind of like a collection of uh, gits or dorm rooms, you might say. And uh, I haven't talked about the health pass because you know you might be watching this video two years from now and hopefully by then COVID is a thing of the past so I don't want to date the videos but yeah everywhere you go they ask you for it when you go in everybody's wearing their mask they scan it and then on you go uh, nobody's complaining about their rights or bitching about it you know we just do it and that's the situation right now I have a dinner at 7 p.m. and breakfast is going to be tomorrow at 7.30 just like it always is everywhere that I go. This is kind of like a castle, man. I feel like I'm locked into the castle because there's nothing here around it. 
everywhere you looked, it's just like the mountains and you see the, the forest. It reminded me when I was uh, here in France on the Via Francigena, getting close to, uh, what was it, Pontalier? It was close to the border with uh, Switzerland. Same kind of feeling of, uh, of being in a, in a barn, so to speak, in the middle of nowhere. If you're looking for a secluded place, a place to escape, to be out here with nature, then this gate tops the list. My God, it's so peaceful right here. I'm by this uh, small little pond with uh, some frogs here to keep me company. I have the wind going through the forest in front of me and it's just uh, perfect. Just waiting for seven o'clock to have uh, the pilgrim uh, meal with all the other pilgrims that are here, staying here tonight all the people that I've been uh, coming across over the last uh, three days, some of them I can actually speak to them, all the ones are just the typical, hi, how are you, uh, you know, bonjour. And uh, yeah, just walking around the property, it is very windy right now and getting a little bit cold, but it's just, uh, it's just the perfect spot. Just enjoying the Camino. <laughs> All right, another gorgeous day has come to a close with a communal dinner, about 30 pilgrims in total. I was sitting there in the corner by myself as always, and then the ones that speak English kind of like seek me out and they want to talk to me, which is always appreciated. And uh, we have so much food. It, the pilgrim uh, menu here is just amazing. And it's, uh, it's from the area, you know, local farmers here actually run this place. So they're, uh, you know, they like it when they see you enjoying their food. So of course, I want to thank uh, Nancy. You're the rock star for today, the trail angel. Thank you so much for your support. Tomorrow, I'll see you all at 7.30 sharp for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs>